This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Well, to you. That's one of the things he established, that nothing can be impossible to you. It is impossible for you to be defeated by the reason of the knowledge of resurrection. It is impossible for you to be defeated as a child of God. It is impossible for you not to live in dominion. Because you need to know what Jesus did for you. And what Jesus did for us is the foundation of our boldness. If I'm going to be a bold person, a person who is going to operate in the spirit of boldness, I need to have the revelation of resurrection. If I'm going to operate from a place of boldness, I need to have the revelation of resurrection. So this message is titled, The Revelation of Resurrection. The revelation of resurrection. That's the title of this message. There is a revelation about resurrection. What that revelation will introduce to your life is to give you the understanding to see that nothing can stop your rising. It's to give you the understanding to see that no situation can resist the expression of God's goodness around you. It's to give you the reason to see that it is impossible for you to be conquered by things that conquers others. This revelation that his reason position you to express the God life. There is the God life that is a product of resurrection. And this God life will be in manifestation by revelation. The day you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you became a partaker of God's nature. I want to say that again. The day you became a Christian, you received Jesus into your life. You confess the Lordship of Jesus. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that God have raised Jesus from the dead. You became a partaker of the divine nature. God's nature is superior to any situation. I said God's nature is superior to any situation. We are expected to operate from the nature of God. I said we are expected to operate and function from the nature of God. We are expected to operate and function from the nature of God that is in us. For that to be a reality, I need to have the revelation of his indwelling nature in me. When you heard Paul said, Christ in you. He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the foundation for the glory life. If you're going to live a life of glory, it will proceed from this revelation of the indwelling Christ. A life of glory is a life of dominion. A life of glory is a life of power. A life of glory is the life where you are in charge, you are in control, and you decide what happens around you as a result of the knowledge of the indwelling Christ in you. Christ dwells in me. When you have this knowledge that Christ dwells in you, it makes you to become superior to whatever you're dealing with. That situation is not supposed to be superior to you. That problem is not expected to be superior to you. 
that circumstances is not expected to be superior to you. Whatever you are dealing with is not, whether it's addiction, whether it's something you're struggling with, is not expected to be superior to you because Christ in you, the proof of glory. Christ in you, the proof of glory. Because I have Christ in me, I'm going to walk in the blessing. Because I have Christ in me, I can manifest the will of God. Because he dwells in me. I can walk in the consciousness of this indwelling Christ and produce the God kind of experience. I can walk in the consciousness of the indwelling Christ. And it's so important that we become more conscious of who lives in us. John was right in facts, John 4 verse 4. He said, greater is he that is in you. Part of that scripture said, greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. When you're facing any situation, this is your advantage. Greater is he that is in me. You're facing any financial crisis, greater is he that is in me. You're dealing with any emotional problem, greater is he that is in me. This knowledge that the greater one dwells in you will position you to do the impossible. This knowledge that the greater one lives in you. How dare you say that witchcraft shut down your destiny? How dare you say somebody is stopping me from rising? It's not possible. Except you don't have the revelation of the indwelling Christ and you don't have the revelation of resurrection. The revelation of resurrection and the revelation of the indwelling Christ is what empowers you for supernatural living. The revelation of resurrection that he's risen and the revelation of the indwelling Christ is what empowers you for supernatural living. If you're going to live supernaturally, you must have light in these two subjects I just mentioned. The revelation of the indwelling Christ, the revelation of resurrection. You must have knowledge in this area. He's risen for me to rise above limitations. He's risen for me to manifest the will of God in all aspects of my life. His reason for me to manifest the will of God, for me to live a life of the will of God. There is a life called the life of the will of God. A life of the will of God is a life that is consistent with the goodness of God. There is a life called the life of the will of God. It is a life that is consistent with the goodness of God. When you hear that a man is living in the will of God, it is an expression of God's goodness. And that is why it's important for you to know what the will of God is. Colossians 1 verse 9. Part of the thing what that scripture told us is that you may, you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. That you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. That you be filled with the knowledge of his will. What will the knowledge of his will do? It will move you into greater things of the spirit. The knowledge of his will will move you into greater things of the spirit. If there's going to be manifestation of greater things of the spirit, it is because of the knowledge of his will. It will move you into greater things of the spirit. This is why you must feed on the word of God. When we were coming for this service, I was talking to my two boys. I told them, People need to read your Bible every day. You need to pray every day and read the word every day. There are things you cannot do by your strength. There are things you cannot do by your strength. There is a supernatural intelligence we unlock by fellowshipping with the word. I said there is a supernatural intelligence we unlock by fellowshipping with God's word. There is a supernatural intelligence we unlock by fellowshipping with God's word. There is a supernatural understanding that we generate by fellowshipping with God's word. Reading the Bible is not a normal thing. 
is a supernatural activity. I said, reading the Bible is not a normal thing. There are things you can't do until you have God's word in you. There are projects, visions, things you can't drive. Why? Because in the natural, you will see your limitation. But the word of God in you becomes the resources to resolve those issues. And that is why Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Not your feelings, not your emotion, not what is happening around you. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The word, let it dwell in you richly. Because if it dwells in you richly, it would decide how you think. It would decide how you look at things. It also decide how you function. It will also decide your response, how you respond to situations, circumstances, and adversity. It will also determine how you approach situation. You see, it is what is in you that determines what you can do. It is what is in you that can determine what you can do. Ability is a product of knowledge. I said ability is a product of knowledge. When you talk about somebody having an ability in an area, it's because he has a knowledge in that area. Ability is a product of knowledge. Ability is a product of knowledge. And that was why Paul was writing. He said, like, he said Christ in you. I need to have the knowledge of the indwelling Christ. This situation cannot remain like this. My life must be better. I must do big things in this life. I must do great things in this life. Romans 10, 17 said, so then faith comes by what? By hearing. How does faith come? It comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. There are things that will not change in your life until you become intentional about God's word and its application. There are things that will not change in your life. The situation will remain the same until you become intentional towards God's word and its application. You become intentional towards God's word. There are more that say that time will change things. Time doesn't change things. Time will never change anything. Time was not wired to change things. What changed things is understanding. What changed things is knowledge. What change things is wisdom. Time doesn't change things. I want to say, time will tell. If people have wisdom, they will never be disadvantaged. If they have understanding, they know what to do with their life. The people that said time will tell, okay, when time come, when time, the, if you don't have knowledge, you will have regrets. I said, if someone does not have knowledge, you will have what? You will have regrets. It is the absence of knowledge and its application that produce setback. Most of the setback we see in life today is people not having the correct knowledge of God's word to know what to say, to know how to say it, to know when to say it, and to know who to say it to. Hallelujah. So the revelation of resurrection lays the foundation for strong faith. And resurrection was possible by the Spirit of God. Resurrection was possible by the Holy Ghost. It was by the Spirit of God that resurrection became a reality. Resurrection happened as a result of the intervention of the Spirit of God. It showed up in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. He said, the earth was without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. The next thing we saw, the spirit move. Genesis 1 verse 3 was saw, and God said, let there be light. When Jesus died and was buried, he could have remained in that grave till this morning if the Holy Spirit did not intervene. It is the spirit that made resurrection possible. It was the Holy Ghost. He was the child of the Holy Ghost. And it was the Holy Ghost that made resurrection possible. The possibility.
certainty of resurrection was being decided by the Spirit of God. Because Jesus walked on this earth as a man. That was why you heard Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. He walked on this earth as a man. And that was why he was being tempted in all form that were being tempted today, but he never yielded. That simply means that with, with the Spirit, you can rise above temptations. With the Spirit, you can have dominion over situation and circumstances and one of the key things that made jesus very strategic and effective was his ability to yield himself to the spirit of god he knew how to respond to the flow of the spirit he knew how to follow the flow of the spirit of god there are a lot of believers sorry to say this the way they behave it will be difficult for god to help them see there is how you behave uh, it will be difficult for God. He said, how can it be difficult for God? Mark chapter 6, he could not do mighty works there. Not that he doesn't want to do it. He could not because of their unbelief. Unbelief is in different ways. Unbelief is in what? It's in different ways. There are people asking God for help, but you need to position yourself to receive help. You need to position yourself to get the help that you're looking for, the help you want to see. And Jesus positioned himself to always have the flow of the Spirit. He never did anything he was not led into. He never did anything he never got a word from. He was not a kind of person that wake up and just acted based on emotion. He was always acting based on revelation. Jesus was always acting based on revelation. And let me say this to you. For you to act based on revelation, your mind has to constantly be renewed by God's word. If your mind is not renewed by God's word, your needs, your bills will drive you crazy. Your bills and your need will put you in a position where you always compromise the principles of God's word. There was something unique about Jesus. His ability to follow the flow of the Spirit. He was always yielding to the ways of the spirit. He was always yielding. If you want to see success, if you want to see productivity, if you want to see influence, learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. Yielding yourself to the spirit is key and very strategic. So resurrection was possible by the word and the spirit. Resurrection was possible by what? By the word of God and the spirit of God. That was how resurrection came. By the word and the spirit. It, that is the same way you are going to rise in life. That is the same way you are going to succeed with life. Let me say this to you. Your success or your failure doesn't depend on God. Neither the devil nor people. Your success or failure depends on you. Your success or failure does not depend on God. It said pertaining to life, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. Part of the key thing he said is pertaining to life and godliness. God has given us all things. Let me say this to you. Coming to church doesn't mean you're hearing what I'm saying. And truth be told, this message you just heard now. If you don't listen to it over and over, you won't get it. You heard Pastor Ketch on Sunday saying that you should go and listen to it over and over and over and over because they know that is the way you get it. But the people, the service ended, it ended. For the word to work for you, you have to be intentional about the word. For the word of God to work for you as a Christian, you have to be intentional about it. It will not just work. If the word of God just work, why are some people seeing their condition? Why are some people still, after the prayer, after, why, why, why? Why couldn't their situation change? Their finances, their marriage, their life. Why didn't it change? Because the change doesn't happen that way. Your change is born out of intentional effort. You got to be intentional about it to see the change. Change won't just come. You need to become a partaker of the change you're trying to create. And how are you going to do that? You're going to do that by the word of God you have received. You need to receive that word. You need to go back to that word. You need to work on that word. Nothing just happened. It's an intentional decision. You, he said faith comes by hearing. Eh? It's not just hearing for the first time. Continuous hearing. Persistent hearing. 
He said, faith comes by hearing. This is not my people. They said, oh, I want my situation to change. They are not ready to change their situation. They are not ready to change their situation. A man who is ready to change his situation will change his situation. A man that is ready to change his situation, I said, will change his situation. Why? Faith needs to rise for you to have a confection. Faith needs to rise in your heart for you to produce the God kind of experience. I've said this this morning before here. When we're trying to pay for this land, there was no money. This church property. I got a particular message from Pastor Ketch that has to do with possessing the land. Every day, I will listen to that message. And, and she was teaching how Jeremiah bought the land from prison. How Jeremiah was inside prison and bought a land that became my resources. Can I say this to you? Every shift begins with the light you have received from the world. Every shift you want to see. Every change you want to see. Every improvement you want to see. It begins with the light. You can't beg your way through. You can't cry your way through. You can't worry your way through. You cannot win by being depressed or being sad. But, oh, you don't know what I'm going through. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody wants to know what you're going through. Whatever you're going through is your business. It is your job to fix it. It is your job to accept the responsibility that will produce the change you're looking for. I was listening to that message. I had it inside my car. As I'm driving, and Jeremiah bought the land from prison. And she was prophesying. I was saying him every day as the day break. I will listen to that message. Why? I have a project that requires first the word, second, the leading of the spirit, and third manifestation. I have a vision. It will take God's word to produce the God kind of experience. Nothing will change. Until there is a truth that confronts it. Nothing will change until there is a truth that's been enforced into the situation. You can't beg your way through. You can't cry your way through. No matter how people love you, there is a limit to what they can do for you. No matter how they love you, there is a limit to what they can do for you. Resurrection was possible by the word and the spirits. There are people that don't have time for God's word. They want to see results. Pastor, how are you doing what you're doing? I'll tell you that there are things I will listen to for the next three months. You're walking on it. You're believing God for this. And you're walking the wisdom of God. You're listening. Faith comes by hearing. How does faith come? It comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. It's not hearing once. You know, some people say, when we get trouble, we'll go push them out. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go shake their, we'll go rock their boots. If you're being where I am, nobody will tell you. This one, they tell you now. Now you're going to tell yourself. Yes, now. When you don't know where the money will come from. When you don't know where you get the money from. When you don't know who will help you. When you have no fallback. When you have no options. When you have no relationship in the natural that can bail you out and you're left only one option, either God show up or I sink. Nobody will tell you that, man. You need to work on this thing. You need to work on it. Resurrection was possible by the word and the spirit. He will rise... I will, I will destroy this temple and I will build it in three days. Resurrection. Resurrection. It was by the word and the spirit. Everything will remain the same until God's people choose to see the word of God as their final authority. Everything will remain the same until God's people begins to see God's word as their final authority. The situation will remain the same. Cry all you want to cry. Look for who will help you. Feel bad. Nothing will change 
Every change begins with the knowledge of the word and the help of the spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Romans 8. Okay, we can take it from verse 10. Romans chapter 8. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Okay, Let, let's read it from verse 9 till 11. And then we can have a clear picture. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So, you are of Christ when so you have the spirit of Christ in you. Verse 10 said, Romans 8, verse 10, he said, And if Christ is in you, this is one of the key things that you need to study and study very well. Christ in me. Christ in me. Hallelujah. Christ in me. This consciousness is important in living the supernatural life. Christ in me. Christ in me. He is Christ in me. Hallelujah. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. He said, but if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead, that means Jesus was not the one that raised himself. From that scripture we read, we're seeing it was not Jesus that raised himself from the dead. It was the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That is why it is the spirit that quickens your mind for supernatural reception of the word. It is the spirit that quickens your mind for supernatural reception of the word. It is the spirit that quickens your mind. You're willing something. And then you have a visitation from a scripture. You're reading the Bible. You're reading a scripture. And there is a visitation that came from that word. If that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. He will quicken my mortal body. He will quicken my mind. This same spirit will quicken my understanding. This same spirit will empower me to excel. This same spirit will cause me to prosper. This same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. And because it dwells in me, nothing can be impossible to my faith. This spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in me right now. This is why nothing can be impossible to me. I have the Holy Ghost. To have the expression of the God life. I have the Holy Spirit. To have the expression. Of the God life. Those that are going to have the expression of the God life. Must be people that understand partnership. Fellowship. With the spirit of God that dwells in them. Resurrection. Was possible. By the word and the spirit. And for you to rise. It will be by the word of God and the spirit of God. For you to rise, it will be by the word of God and the spirit of God. People look at their life and say, nothing is working in this family. It's like there is so much hardship in this family. There is so much challenge in this family. There is so much crisis in this family. There is so much issue in this family. Let somebody in that family receive the revelation of resurrection. It will change their thinking. It will reposition their mindset. It will change how they look at things. From now they say to themselves, I'm carrying the blessing. I'm the seed of Abraham. I am of Christ. I'm a partake of the divine nature. The very life of the Father is in me. Nothing can be impossible to me. Your possibility is connected to your ability to stay connected to the flow of the spirit. Your possibility is connected to your, your ability to stay connected to the flow of the spirit. Your possibility 
is connected to your ability to stay connected to the flow of the spirit if you want to see possibility you have to stay connected to the flow of the spirit you have raised the flow of the spirit you have raised the flow of the spirit of god death was conquered by the help of the spirit death lost its grip on the body of jesus when the spirit stepped in the spirit supplied the life to the body the spirit supplied life enter the body the spirit caused the grave not to withstand the life that entered his body he was really dead it was a lifeless body if that spirit that raised jesus from the dead that raised jesus how can you have the holy ghost that raised jesus from the dead and you said that somebody tied your destiny you lied how can you have the spirit that raised jesus from the dead living inside of you and the person said somebody sitting on my destiny when grave when grave when death look at two factors death grave the roman soldiers could not withstand the life that emanated that came out of the spirit of god and you see a believer running from place to place looking for solution they didn't have the revelation of that spirit that risen from the dead that's why you see false prophets taking advantage of god's people because most of god's people don't have the revelation of the spirit that raised jesus from the dead the spirit that raised him from the dead can raise up your financial life that same spirit can raise your vision your assignment your purpose but the problem most of the time is this most people don't have the revelation of the life and the operation of that spirit and that is why we're in this service this morning that by the spirit the word reveals the spirit and the spirit teach you how to flow with the word the word reveals the spirit and the spirit teach you how to respond to the word I want to say that again. I said the word of God reveals the spirit of God. And the spirit of God teaches you how to respond to the word. The word reveals the spirit. And the spirit teaches you how to respond to the word. That spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. If that spirit raised Jesus from the dead, how can that business not grow? How can your life not make progress? No way. That spirit that raised him from the dead. Is at work here this morning. You begin to declare that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in operation in my life. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead it has caused me to walk in dominion, in liberty, in freedom. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is empowering me to produce uncommon results. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the doorway to supernatural living. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is resident in you as a New Testament believer. As a New Testament believer, you have the spirit of God dwelling in you. You have the Holy Ghost in you. You have the spirit of God in you. He can tell you what that man is saying is true. The spirit can be a witness with your spirit and what you're hearing is true the spirit can show you the way to go and how to go it is by the spirit we connect with the will of god we connect with the purpose of god and we'll receive god giving expectations it is by the spirit of god it is by the spirit it is by the spirit we'll receive the will of god we understand the purpose of god and will receive expectations from God. By the spirit will do the impossible. All things are possible. And somebody said how can you say all things are possible. All things are possible. 
No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what is before you right now, all things are possible. All things are possible. Resurrection is a proof that nothing can be impossible to God. Resurrection is a proof that nothing can be impossible to God. It's a proof that nothing can be impossible to God and nothing can be impossible to his word. Resurrection is a proof that will have an evidence that is greater than death. Resurrection is a proof. And that is why you need to be conscious of the God life in you. You need to be conscious that Christ in me, my victory. Christ in me, my dominion. Christ in me, my power. Christ in me, my essence of life. Christ in me, what it takes to live in liberty. Christ in me, what it takes to manifest power. Christ in me. I have Christ in me. I have Christ in me. Greater is he that is in me than what is in the world. These are the knowledge that should be coming out of your mouth. The greater one lives in me, I cannot be broke. The greater one lives in me, I'll be led by the Spirit of God. The greater one lives in me, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. I have a godly heritage. The greater one lives in me, for that reason I have the wisdom of God. I have an understanding of the things of the Spirit. The greater one lives in me, I can never be stranded. I can never, faith man can never be stranded. Faith man can never be stranded. The greater one, I have a partner who does not quit, it's called the Holy Ghost. I have the partner who cannot quit, it's called the Holy Spirit. He's the one that cannot give up on you. He's the one, he said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. We don't have to pray, God be with us. He's already dwelling in us. Christ in you. You cannot say, oh God, come and be with us. No, 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 he, he dwells in you. He dwells in you. He lives in you. And because he lives in you, nothing can be impossible to you. And this is why you need the knowledge of the indwelling Christ. That Christ is living in me. My life must work. Nobody in your family has prospered. You are going to break the limitation. Why? Because Christ in you. This kingdom answers to knowledge. The abundant life will be manifestation by revelation knowledge. I said the abundant life will be in manifestation by revelation knowledge. The abundant life, the God life you have received will be in manifestation. You start seeing the proof and the fruits, the proofs and the fruits of the God life by revelation knowledge. And that is why we said this morning that resurrection is possible by the word and the spirit. God said it was going to happen and the spirit made it to happen. God said it's going to happen. And the spirit made it to happen. What is the application of resurrection to my life? Number one, he's a reason for you to live in dominion. He's a reason for you to live in dominion. He's a reason for you to live in dominion. He's a reason for you to live in dominion. His reason for you to walk in power. To walk in power. You are expected to walk in power. You are expected to walk in power. You are not expected to be conquered by witchcraft. You are higher. You are in a higher realm. You are sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Colossians 3 verse 1. You are sitting in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. His reason for you to constantly live in victory. His reason for you to constantly. For you to consistently live in victory. That's why his reason. His reason for you to live in victory. For you to live in victory. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. In Christ. His reason for you to constantly live in victory. A lifestyle of victory is the proof of the resurrection. A lifestyle of victory is the proof of the resurrection. His reason for you to manifest the blessing. 
His reason for you to manifest the blessing. Your call to manifest the blessing. There has to be a manifestation of the blessing in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, and around you. There has to be a manifestation of the blessing. His reason for you to manifest the blessing. To manifest the blessing. Everywhere you go, something should happen for good. When you come into a church, the church should start growing. When you walk into a business place, the business should start growing. His reason for the manifestation of the blessing. His reason for you to manifest the blessing. But for you to manifest the blessing, you need to have the knowledge of how the blessing works. His reason for you to manifest the blessing. His reason for you to walk in an uncommon favor. His reason for you to walk in uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. There is what is called preferential treatment. There is preferential treatment. His reason for you to walk in an uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. Favor that can never be resisted. You have favor with people. You have favor with God. His reason for you to have favor with God. To have favor with men. You are not expected to be subdued to pain, to shame, and to humiliation. His reason for you to walk in favor. I have the favor of God on my life. Doors open for me. Because his reason. I have the favor of God on my life. The things I touch prosper. Because his reason. Resurrection is a proof. That the God life needs to be in operation in your everyday life. Resurrection is a proof that the God life has to be in operation in your everyday life. Resurrection is a proof that the God life that is in you has to be in operation. Has to be in operation. Has to be in expression. Every day of your life. Resurrection is a proof of that life. His reason for you to walk in wisdom his reason for you to walk in wisdom the manifold wisdom of God will be in operation when we walk in the light of resurrection the manifold wisdom of God will be in operation when we walk when we walk in the light of resurrection the manifold wisdom of God that the system of this world cannot handle. There is the manifold wisdom of God. You just know what to do. And you just know when to do it. You just know what to do. And you know when to do it. And you know how to do it. You just know what to do. You know what to do. How to do it. When to do it. Where to do it. I have the manifold wisdom of God. I have the manifold wisdom of God. The wisdom to understand seasons. The wisdom to understand timing. The wisdom to acknowledge. The wisdom to acknowledge. The wisdom to have right interpretation of things. Come on. The wisdom to have right interpretation of situations, circumstances. The wisdom to speak the counsel and the purpose of God. The wisdom to align my life in the direction of the will of God. The wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom, manifold wisdom. A lot of people are losing a lot of things because they lack wisdom. Lack of wisdom is the major reason for deficiency. Lack of wisdom is the major reason why most people cannot sustain what God has given to them. Lack of wisdom. It will take wisdom for you to rise. And it will take wisdom for you to start it up. To take wisdom. His reason for you to live in wisdom. For you to walk in wisdom. That's why his reason. That you will have a life. That is based on the wisdom of God. There is how the wisdom of God look at things. And there is how the wisdom of God will do things. His reason. For you to walk in wisdom. Wisdom to understand seasons, timing. Wisdom to understand people. Wisdom to understand what is required of you. It takes wisdom for you to know what is required of you in relationship. 
it takes wisdom for you to know what expectation they have placed on your life. It takes wisdom for you to negotiate. For you to negotiate. It takes wisdom for you to start a conversation that will accelerate your vision. It takes wisdom. His reason for you to function from a place of wisdom. The wisdom to understand seasons and timing. The wisdom to understand what God has done and what God is doing. The wisdom. The wisdom to connect with divine moment. Oh my God, my character. Blah, 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 blah. I told my wife the other day, I said, I wish I could enter into some of my members and live their life for them. I wish I could just enter into some of them if it was possible, and then help them lift, run what I'm trying to talk about, but it's not possible. I wish I could just enter into some of you here and just begin to reposition how to run this whole thing. The wisdom. That's why Paul was praying in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18 that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will grant us of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Then he said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened because if you don't know these things you walk in darkness if you don't know these things you will slow your life down and you're praying god why did he lay i break the yoke of delay i break every yoke of delay everything that is delaying my destiny no it is the wisdom of god that is required to negotiate your way to the top his reason for you to function from the place of manifold wisdom Wisdom teaches you how to answer. Hey, wisdom teaches you. That house we are living. Now, the time the kitchen used to flood with water, flood as rain for the whole kitchen in that house will be filled with water and it will walk, it will flow to the dining. And my wife said, Ah, let's call the landlady and tell her what we're going through. I said, No, we're not calling her. We have enjoyed so much goodness from her. Let's endure this part. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? <laughs> we have enjoyed so much goodness from her. Somebody who told you when you want to parent, take part of the money and buy mattress. Somebody who gave you air condition. Somebody who gave you all the curtains in your house. Somebody who gave you all the reading table. Somebody who gave you so many things. No, this is our part. Of the experience let's bear it but you see if i don't have wisdom we'll start saying hey the place itself is even flooding water hey you see the, the reason why a lot of people are losing out is not just witchcraft it's lack of wisdom to understand what i have received and what I am dealing with her. I may be dealing with this, but what I've received was more to comfort me to deal with this. It takes wisdom to open your mouth. Oh God, thank you Jesus. Try God. You know, sometimes you're praying and saying, God, do this. God, do that. But the wisdom to enter the answered prayer. Hey! There is a wisdom to enter the answered prayer. Yesterday I got a text. They found something from one of my partners in the U.S. He has been partnering with me for over eight years now, and he said, "Well, we have not met in person." He said, "Apostle, how God put us together is amazing." Apostle, I was just sitting down, reflecting and thanking God for how God put us together. How God has made both of us to work on projects, on things. How God, you see, it takes the wisdom of God to acknowledge the goodness of God. I said it takes the wisdom of God to do what? To acknowledge the goodness of God. It takes the wisdom. You see, if you're not walking in wisdom, you can be walking against yourself. A lot of people are walking against themselves. Maybe witchcraft. Someone say, ah, what is coming from your father's side? Leave that rubbish prayer. Leave that useless prayer. Where is the wisdom? Where is the wisdom to interpret the season? The wisdom to understand what your action, your decision should be. 
is the reason for you to walk in manifold wisdom. Wisdom to know what to tell your boss. Wisdom to know what to say. Wisdom to understand the boundary time. Wisdom to know the people who can pull things and your life change. The wisdom for them. See many people don't have it. The wisdom. Acknowledgement comes from wisdom. You need to be working in wisdom to acknowledge what you have received and what is done for you. Wisdom. A lot of people are not suffering because of witchcraft or because of the condition of Nigerian economy. Most suffering is the absence of wisdom. The wisdom to acknowledge. The wisdom to keep what is written. His reason for you to live in wisdom. Resurrection came. To establish the wisdom of God in the heart of men. His reason for the wisdom of God to make his way into the hearts of men that are ready to receive. A lot of people don't understand the manifold wisdom. Wisdom teaches you season, time, and places. Come on. God has put me here. What is the purpose? The wisdom of God will tell me that this place will take you there. But you see, if I don't have wisdom, I will leave the place to pursue there and then I won't get there. Wisdom. 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 The wisdom. Resurrection is, is reason for you to function from a place of wisdom. There are certain things you don't even open your mouth. You just say, Lord, thank you. I receive wisdom to know what to say. I receive wisdom to know what to do. A lot of us think because we have tongue and have brain, we can start talking. You can talk something that can talk you out. You can say something that can pull you away. It takes the wisdom of God to understand the mind of God. It will take the wisdom of God for you to understand the mind of God concerning some things. No, no, I'm going to be at that one. That side, I will do that side. That side, I will do that side. In don't do this side. Me, I will do that side. Wisdom. You don't handle this one. You don't handle this one. Me, I go handle this side. Wisdom teach you activity that will lead to your productivity. Wisdom will teach you activities that will lead to your productivity. Wisdom is reason for you to walk in influence. Influence. Positive influence. He wants you to be a positive influencer. His reason for you to influence your world with his word, with his purpose, his reason. Huh. Positive influence. That's why his reason. His reason. People have done things for me that in the natural, they can't do it for nobody. <laughs> they can't do it for nobody. They can't even do it for themselves. <laughs> Talking about doing it for me. In the natural, they cannot do it for themselves. But it's that person who's going to do it for you. Pastor, don't worry about this. I, I got you here. I got you here. You just go sleep. I got you here. I have many things to do, but you're going to confess, Apostle. Yeah, I have many things to do, but you're going to confess, Apostle. Wisdom teaches you that gratitude is the oxygen of relationship. Wisdom teaches you that gratitude is the oxygen of relationship. Wisdom teaches you that gratitude, gratitude, is the oxygen is the oxygen of lasting and productive relationship wisdom i'm talking about gratitude that flow from the head i'm talking about gratitude that flows from the heart there are gratitude that flow from the head thank you now thank you thank you i never tell you thank you every time my mama I tell you thank you you know they do for you i mean every time you do something for me my mama I tell you thank you but thank you thank you thank you thank you five times that's from the head that's from the head. But I say gratitude that flows from the heart that comes with a good attitude. The person self at the other end can feel it. Can do what? Have somebody thank you before and you feel it. Have somebody thank you before you know it's fake. <laughs> I was telling my pastor last week, I said, Pastor, now you do pastor. It's apostle to the old, now you do pastor. <laughs> Today old now you do pass. Say pass now you do pass. Say today old now you do pass. Today old now you do pass. 
gratitude can be felt when somebody thank you from their heart. You can you see, let me tell you. If people don't feel what you're saying, it means you're lying. <laughs> it means you don't like you just want to give there is formality. No, it has to come from the heart. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I don't know where I'll be today, if not for you, how you came for me. I am grateful. I am grateful. Gratitude is the oxygen of lasting relationship. People can tolerate you and endure you. Doesn't mean they want to cope with you. They want to stay around you. They are just toler tolerating you and just enduring you. If God gives them option, they will change you. We shouldn't be those kind of people. Somebody heard what I'm saying right now. We shouldn't be the kind of people that if God said, Ungwa, this relationship now, or this marriage, or this business relationship, whatever relationship, is, do you still like this person? If I give you another option, ah! freedom to my people, look at my flag. Some people will just pull out. Some people are enduring you, most of us, not because they're enjoying us. I should be a kind of person that people enjoy me, not endure me. I should be a kind of person that people enjoy, they just enjoy me. I'm like oxygen to their heart. I should be a kind of person like that. That people enjoy me, not that they're enduring me. No, no. They should enjoy me. Because of my gesture, how I carry myself, how I do my things, the language that come from me, the way I respond, that they just want to be around me. Sometimes when people are tired of you, they don't tell you. Believe me. Sometimes when people are tired of you, they don't tell you. They, they may endure you because they have no replacement for you right now. But that should not be the way we should be. The lamb was slain for we to have influence. Resurrection for we to have influence. Positive influence on the lives of people. Now when this person goes, ah, if this brother was here now, this thing will not be like this. If this sister was here, ah, by now, this whole place, ah, if this person was here, oh my God, ah, if this person, there are people you don't miss them. You only miss the confusion they are creating. The problem, the opposition. We shouldn't be those kind of people. We should be the kind of people that they have not seen us. But I know even see them. Know that they are under like, oh, might just do pastoral job or believer's job or following up brethren. You know that it's that kind of job. To follow up brethren and follow them up, brother, what happened? Sister, what happened? It's just pastoral job. It's called pastoral care. But I'm talking about when a person, it's not just about pastoral job or pastoral care. This person is touching lives. This person is making a difference. This person is reliable. This person is dependable. You can count on this person. 10 years has passed, the person is still with you. 20 years has passed, he's still there. It's dependable, it's reliable. I'm talking about people who have understood what it means to bring positive influence to the lives of people that are around them. His reason for you to influence people for good, a city set on the hill cannot be hid. You are the light of the world. And for you to be the light that is going to shine in darkness, you need to be a person of positive influence. Finally, his reason for you to walk in an uncommon strength. There is an uncommon strength that we experience when we know his reason. His reason for we to walk in an uncommon strength. The strength that breaks limitation. The strength that produces uncommon results. His reason for we to walk in uncommon strength. Uncommon strength. When you are strengthened, you know, Jesus was telling Peter, the enemy wants to ruin your life, but I prayed for you when you are strengthened, strengthen your brethren. That's what he told him. He said, when you are strengthened, he said what? 
He says, strengthen your brethren. You're the kind of person that brings encouragement to people in the house of God. You give encouragement. That when you come, you come with hope. There are people that, when they come, they don't see hope around. They see nothing. Nobody cares for you. Nobody wants to know what you're going through. No, be the one caring for people. Huh? Whatever you sow will come in abundance. If you're sowing love and care to come back to you. Am I ministering to somebody right now? Whatever you, you send out comes in. Amen? It's reason for you to sow the seed of care. The seed of love. Because you have the strength for that. And that's what God is calling us to do in this season. That will become encouragement to one another. Resurrection is God encouraging humanity. That there is a hope. I said what? Resurrection is God encouraging humanity that there is what? A hope. No matter what you have lost, you can get it again. It's God's language. Resurrection is a language of encouragement, language of restoration, and language of God's goodness. That's resurrection. It's the language of encouragement that God is encouraging a person. God is encouraging people. And telling them, if I can raise him from the dead, I can raise your life. I can raise your vision. I can help you with your assignment. If I can. It's, it's a resurrection. It's, it's God's story of hope. God's story of life. Light. That no matter how bad it is, I can make it good. That's resurrection. No matter how bad your situation is, I can do what? I can make it good. And God is willing to make it good for you this year. In this resurrection service, may your story be different. May God give you wisdom to change situation and change circumstances. May God give you wisdom to know what to say, how to say it, when to say it, who to say it to, and how you should say it in the name of Jesus. Let's rise this morning and give him praise. Let's thank him. Lord, we thank you this morning. We we'll give you praise this morning. We we'll thank you for this resurrection service. Thank you for ministering wisdom, understanding, light to us. Thank you for the things you do. Thank you for how you do them. Makotobo shakalababa. Rendobo shakandaraba sheketoli gadababa. Rendobo shakandaraba sheketoli karababa. Rendobo shakorobo sheketoli blagada. Randobo shakatala blagada. Rendobo shakatala bashakababa. He's the reason. For you to live a life of dominion. Ha <laughs> ha. This is the season to take your walk with God serious. Your relationship with God serious. Your commitment. If there are areas where you have missed it, you ask God for forgiveness and ask him for mercy. But this is the season to take your walk with God serious. That this year, my walk with God must be serious. I must take my relationship with Jesus to another level. My korobo shakababa. Mm. Lekete kanda raba ba, rendo bo shakanda la ba shekoto li blagara, rande bo shekanda raba sheketa li kata la ba ba, lekere bo shakanda ra, rendo bo shekanda raba shekanda raba ba, rando bo shekanda di bo shakata, lendo bo shekata le bo shakata la ba ba. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you. We glorify you. Man, dede bo shanda la ba ba, rande bo shakata la ba 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 ba. His reason for you to walk in wisdom. It's reason for your faith to come alive. It's reason for you to practice the knowledge of the indwelling Christ that is in you. It's reason for you to walk in the light of his will. It's reason for you to walk in the blessing, to walk in victory, to live a life of dominion. Father, we thank you this morning. I pray for everyone this morning that they are, they'll be quickened in the knowledge of your will, in the knowledge of your purpose, in the knowledge of your intentions concerning them. I pray for you this morning that understanding will break through your heart and begin to enter through you and begin to cause you to know what to do, how to do it and when to do it. We'll receive understanding by the Spirit of God this morning to rise in the things of the Spirit, to produce in the things of the Spirit. We'll receive understanding. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I pray for you this morning that the heaven over you remains open. I pray for you this morning that you will see the hand of God and it will be strong in your life. I pray that you have testimonies that will amaze your contemporaries. In the name of Jesus, 
I pray that the hand of God will be strong on your life and cause you to make profit and prosper in every direction in the name of Jesus. That you see good days, you see great days, you see wonderful days, you rise in the things of the Spirit, you make progress and you produce and come on results in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning we're going to give our title offering. Today's also Partnership Sunday. Happy Easter to everyone. Happy Resurrection.